What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Dead Funny Podcast. I'm your host, Chris. Joining me today is my co-host, Kelsey and JoJo. How are you doing, uh, guys? Guys, I just had to yell at them because they were talking about the <laughs> cool stuff before the camera turned on, so they're going to have to redo some of it. Could I shut them up in the middle so the end reactions are all real? Anyway, oh, Chris, <laughs> if there was a character that could be in Dead by Daylight, what character would that want? <laughs> Would that be? What would you want? To <laughs> uh, Mr. X, East. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, he's great. There's no way we don't get a fucking Mr. X outfit for Nemesis. That's gonna fucking happen. I mean, come on, let's be real. But anyways, Pennywise is who we were talking about. So, as some of you know, we've been doing a lot of drunk by daylight streams. Was a lot of you who showed up for. That's been awesome. I appreciate the support. But. <clears throat> Um, and it's always funny because when they do, they're like, hey, it's me from Dead Funny. And I'm like, hey, you from Dead Funny, what's up? So it's great. So appreciate the support. Love it. It's great. I, some of you come out, call me on my bullshit, especially sometimes whenever I'm like really drunk and like I'll miss a skill check and it'll be like, you're supposed to take a drink. And I'm like, oh, I was hoping nobody was watching me. <laughs> so it gets there. It gets there. The, the, the rules we have, like, oh, man, if you're having a bad game. It's it's not going to get any better. It's just not. It's physically. Your bad game is going to make your next game terrible. Like, that's just all there is to that one. Oh, no. Anyways, but, so, obviously we've gotten deep into the Dead by Daylight lore and stuff like that. We've been looking at all the characters, which a lot of them are really, really interesting. But in September, we're supposed to get another chapter. It would be chapter 21, and we're supposed to potentially get a new killer. And there's some things that are leaking, and basically at this point, nothing's been set in stone, but it looks like the race might be between Candyman and might be between Pennywise. So, Candyman, for those of you who don't know, is a horror story that, fucking A, it's a long time ago when Candyman came out. Uh, it's kind of like your classic kid's tale of, like, why not to get in a van that says free candy on the side. Like, it's pretty much what it is. It was like a modern day killer that would go around and like kill people with a hook i'm trying to remember his actual origin i don't remember what his origin yeah, was before like he became a bloody mary scenario where you like it's kind of yeah three times in a mirror yeah, or something the candy man and he's like, the candy man yeah, yeah exactly candy See, man, what no, confuses me about this is there's a movie coming out with candy man and i only know yeah. this because i watch youtube all day at work and i've noticed like it's being advertised at me which is not this is not my jam youtube does not know who i am but it looks like he's pretty invisible i think until he gets like summoned yeah i think it's until he gets summoned he's invisible but yeah so basically he's a guy walking around with a hook for a hand. Um, I think it was a big deal when it came out because the kill or like the actual killer mantra himself is African American. And I don't think we have too many like African American like killer slasher films out there. They're normally oh, like yeah. white inbred hillbillies, you know, all that fun stuff like wrong turn and everything else that, that goes yeah. on. All that fun. Which by the way, I watched the new wrong turn. They made a reboot of that movie. Fucking terrible. The first one was great. You didn't need to fuck with the set. Like, they went all out. Like, it went from just being, like, this hillbilly family in the mountains that's been fucking each other since the dawn of time to fucking this m people who were known as the settlers who have, like, their own cult of, like, living in prehistoric times type deal. So they constantly wear, like, animal skulls and, like, ghillie suits and hunt with bows, arrows, and axes and stuff like that. And that, like, the townspeople around the mountain know of them but are too scared to do anything about them because they're just fucking savages. So oh, Montana. Sure, exactly. Just Montana. Yeah, yeah pretty Great. much. Have you played Far Cry, guys? Because if you have, that 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 that, uh, that was based in fucking Montana. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. That fucking game. Yeah. So for a reason. Yeah. Exactly. But anyways, so yeah, the fucking movie was fucking terrible. I was like, we did not need a remake of this one because the first one was fucking uh, amazing. But anyways, so Candyman. So yeah, the new new uh, one is coming out. And I'm excited about it because the fucking first one was great. I fucking loved it. Uh, scared the shit out of me as a kid. But I'm trying to figure out what his origin was. In present day, a decade after the loss 
of the towers are torn down. Anthony and his partner move into a loft. Da 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 da. Yeah, see, it just doesn't say what his actual thing is. Anyways, Candyman basically is a killer. Like JoJo said, the whole Bloody Mary thing. Say his name three times, he'll show up. He's got a hook for a hand. Fuck shit up. Scary guy. Seriously, I'm, I'm really hoping they bring it. I'm actually looking at the cast right now, and I'm actually pretty pumped for a lot of these people who are in the movie. Okay, so, here, I found something describing his origin here. Me. Go. He's a son of slaves whose father became rich in 1890 after inventing a device for mass-producing shoes. The educated, uh, then Candyman was an artist, but uh, he got a girl pregnant, uh, and then the girl's father killed him, and then he started haunting people. Mm. So, like, there is a racial angle to him being a guy haunting people, and it took place in Chicago in, like, Cabrini Green, so, like, it's very... And then the new movie takes place in the same neighborhood, but, like, gentrified now. It's, like, it's Jordan Peele, like, writing and directing it. Who has done, you know, did us and uh, the is other it Jordan Peele? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know Jordan. No, it's not the new one. I think so. Oh, yeah. Not? This is showing me the old one. I'm sorry. You, you might be right. This is the old no. one. I was all like, bro, that says Bernard Rose. I don't know who you talking about. <clears throat> yeah, Bernard is a yeah, name that has gone into the ether. As far as I'm concerned, it can continue going. It does not need to come back. Yeah, that's fair. So yeah, so Candyman. So yeah, like I said, it fucking scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. And I'm excited to see what they do with this one, especially if Jordan Pill is directing it. That dude's a fucking directing genius. Oh my god, I've loved everything he's came out with. He's so fucking good. And he's just like, I don't mean this in a bad way whatsoever, but like I've seen him on like podcasts with like comedians and shit I like to watch. And he's such an awkward guy. And it's so weird because, like, you see him on Key and Pill, and he's fucking hilarious. He just looks like – and, like, you see, like, uh, Keegan Key outside of that. And, like, his his character and, like, Key and Pill is kind of like his attitude outside of that as well. Like, that's just who he is as a person. So you automatically think Jordan's going to be the same way because they're both together, and it's completely different. Like, uh, uh, look up – when, if you ever get a chance, look up clips of him and Bobby Lee talking on a podcast called Tiger Belly. It's so awkward because Bobby Lee, the comedian, is like, I love you, dude. Like, you're great. You're, like, super fucking awesome. Da, 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 da. And, like, just the way, like, their interactions go. And it was just, like, just so, like, I was like, man, this is awkward. I didn't expect so that. So that's be interesting because, like, like, not even, like, he's uncomfortable being interviewed or something. Like, that's a guy he knows. He's yeah, Bobby a guy Lee. he knows. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So... I don't know. On TV it's together. Great. It's great. Yeah, it's funny. I actually, <laughs> a little ashamed to admit this, but I got onto the key and pill wagon very, very, very late in the game. Like, pretty much when they were getting ready to be done with the show late in the game. And the reason why was, one, I didn't know about it. And two, like, I pretty much stopped watching everything Comedy Central when Dave Chappelle just up and left and went to Africa. I was just like, all right, well, there goes the legend. So... All right, I'm done with that, I guess. So there's no more Chappelle show. So I didn't really give a fuck about Comedy Central because Chappelle show was like my life. I fucking love that thing. Chappelle's my favorite comedian of all time. And so he came back and he was talking. He was doing a stand-up bit. And he, I can't remember what it was, but I think he, I think his joke was something about how he got in trouble with black media for not going to Flint. Whenever a whole bunch of other people were showing up at Flint, I think his joke was something along the lines of like, uh, "You being in showbiz, like you should you should show up for this." And he's all like, "Or like, or did you forget who you were?" He's like, "Forget who I was, my fucking y'all forgot who I was." Fucking Kia, I had to watch Kia and Pill do my goddamn show every day, and I was like, "What the fuck is he? Did they continue doing the Dave Chappelle show?" I looked it up and I was like, "Kia and Pill, what the fuck is this?" And I started watching. I was like, "Oh, this shit's fucking great!" Like I got on the wagon so late, all because of a fucking Dave Chappelle joke. Literally, all because of Dave Chappelle joke. At the so. time, I only watched like clips of it, but I, I've actually been watching Key and Peele like this past two months for the first yeah. time, like in its entirety. Kind of, there's a lot of Obama stuff that doesn't necessarily. <laughs> I mean, whole, it's it's fine stuff. It's just like for Obama that I'm looking for at the moment, I guess. But like, I yeah. really, <laughs> my favorite stuff is when just those two guys are riffing because oh yeah, so funny. And Jordan is naturally just an incredibly funny person. In those situations. Well, the f the first skit I ever saw by them that cracked me the fuck up 
was uh, when they do the skit about like how boyfriends, whenever or husbands or whatever, whenever they talk in the friends, sometimes they'll use the word bitch when they're talking about their significant other and how they're terrified to do it. So it's like the wives are in the house. So they're down there in the, in the basement. He's all like, let me tell you, dude, I was waiting 30 minutes, 30 minutes for her to get ready to come over here. He's I said, 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 bitch, it's time to get in the car. And he's like, you didn't say that. You didn't say that. It's like, bro, I tell you, I swear. All of a sudden, you hear the wives going, y'all doing okay down there? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're doing fine, honey. We're doing fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're doing fine. So it's all about them trying to get to places where the where the women can't hear them. And then, like, the best part is, like, it's at the very end. They're in a fucking rocket ship in outer space. So it's just fucking outlandish. And he's like, he's like he literally goes, he's like, so I told her. I told her. I said, he was talking about, like, picking a restaurant. I, t- I said, I said, I said. And, like, he, like, gets up real quiet, puts on a spacesuit, and he just starts drifting out into space. He's just like, I said, bitch. And I was like, no fucking way, dude. Like, I was like, oh, this is great. This is, like, the just the how outlandish it just kept getting over and over and over again. It was like, we had to top this, top this, top this. I was like, oh, that's fucking hilarious. So, yeah, they got a lot of really fucking good skits that crack me up. Oh man, and there's yeah. a lot of like weirdly horror themed things in their show too. Like it, you can see watching it now, like how Jordan Peele gets to the point he's at now oh, yeah. because there's a lot of things that are just directed in a horror kind of way. Oh yeah, yeah. there's the one where they have the 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 fucking stepson, where Keegan Key is the 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 mom's new boyfriend. And Jordan's playing the, the the stepson, so like it's like a five year old's body, but it's got Jordan's head on it, and he's just yeah. like, "Look here, motherfucker! All right, I don't need a dad. I don't need a fucking friend. All right, you want to bang my mom? That's cool. You do that to your heart's content. But I run this fucking house <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> like the mom looks away, and you see the five year old slap the shit out of Key like right in the fucking face. He's like, "Don't you fucking cry? Don't you fucking cry?" <laughs> It's fucking great. Yeah, they got a lot of stuff like that, too. Yeah, he's got a very interesting mind. Very talented individual. I fucking loved Get Out. Get Out was fucking phenomenal. Such a good movie. So, yeah. it's I, I did not know that he was doing the new Candyman. That's awesome. I'm excited for that. Hell yeah, dude. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I no, enjoyed I right Get here. Out. Yeah. Thought it was a great movie. I think I've told you guys this before. My only issue was a friend of mine was like, the reason it's so scary is it because it could actually happen. And she said that to me going in. And if you've seen Get Out, no, it cannot. No. Science says no. And so I was like, all right. So this very intelligent woman that I am friends with actually thinks that people can just swap brains and continue living forever. Great. We need to work on that. <laughs> yep. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I don't know. It's crazy to me whenever you do see stuff. Like, for instance, you brought up the Montana thing. So going back to that Far Cry game, playing that game, I that's why I was so into it. Because I was like, this could actually fucking happen. Like, that's yeah. how terrifying it is. Like, a guy who is considered, like, father to everybody could literally fucking do this. I was like, holy shit. Like, that stuff right there is, like, fucking insane to me. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, what cults can get away with is horrifying. Yeah. Yeah. It's real scary. There's this show on Netflix, and it's really fucking good, and I want to say it's just called Haunting. It's something like that, where it's just called Haunting. And I thought it was going to be a ghost show, and it started off that way, but it's more of just, like, terrible stories, basically. Like, some of them are dealing with ghosts, and stuff like that but they have this one of this guy and he goes into this just this fucking heart-wrenching story about how he grew up in a cult and Oof. it was one of those where like they kind of lived like kind of like on an Amish type you know fucking situation mm-hmm. not Amish uh, by any means we have the Amish fans which I highly <laughs> highly Highly, highly fucking doubt how you're watching us. I have no fucking clue unless it's like you're literally little... on Rum Springer. Yeah, I'm about to say unless you're on Rum Springer and this is what you chose to do with your free time, fucking yeah, go no. do something else. <laughs> I feel comfortable telling you that. Go do something else. You you don't have a They're lot of time to, to experience the freedom you just got given. Dead funny is not on the top of that list. 
unless you are literally fucking exhausted from doing everything else and you just need something to chill out and listen to, then by all means, welcome and subscribe while you can. We'll miss you when you're gone. Anyway, so yeah. that being said, <clears throat> um, he talks about growing up and uh, he is gay and they could kind of tell early on. Mm -hmm. And so that became a big problem because in their cult, if you will, it was, there was a gay demon living in him that was making him gay. And uh -oh. that if he was to continue this way, it would soon multiply and go into the other son and then corrupt the entire family. And then they would have to get rid of them. Yes, we know that's how gay works. It's it's infectious right. and gets into other people. That's why if you're a straight man, you need to be real afraid of those gays. You don't know when they're going to get you. Yeah. So Sorry. Bullshit. Hate it. <laughs> so mad about this. Continue. So he's a teenager. So at first, his, his punishment was basically like quarantine like you're you're stuck in this room you can't go out and do nothing you can't be around other people you're supposed to stay in here pray all day people will come by pray with you for a little bit then leave so that way they don't get affected by the demon da 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 da, da. i was like all right this sucks but at the same time like out of cult shit i've heard he's getting off easy but the story continues and it just kept going and going and he tells this one story about how his mom used to come in the room to sexually please him to try to make him straight to like a woman's body. Yes, and he goes into like detail, which I'm not going to do, but goes into detail and then goes off to find out that like, you know, they were finally saying that it was gone, da, da 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 and then this new pastor showed up, and he was like, no, absolutely not, the gay demon's still in there, we gotta get him out of here and away from here, and take him to one of our training spots, and then he'll be fine, you know, in a couple months, be able to come home, and apparently he was there for like a couple years, where like, these guys were locked up in cages, like chickens. Oh, Jesus God. What? And like, sprayed off, forced to work. And were sodomized daily by the officers and stuff. Daily. <clears throat> That's horrifying. Yeah. I was That's like. Awful. Yeah. Fucking heartbreaking story. It was fucking nuts. And I was just like, it blows my mind to, that to this day, like there's still operations like this that fucking happen. It's fucking crazy. And I feel so bad for anybody that's so ever been that kind of shit. But man, it's fucking nuts. It's nuts. I was like, holy fuck. Because yeah, like I said, I got started. I was like, oh, cool. All these ghost stories. And all of a sudden this happened. I was like, I, his story was great as far as like very good storyteller and very good message of like, be very careful. Because like he goes into all their manipulation tactics and shit like that and make you feel that what they're saying is 100% true. And for people who are somewhat caught in that kind of situation, if you have a chance to listen to that, fucking take every goddamn word of it. But it's just, it's crazy. Like, Get I mean, out. You don't have to live with that nonsense. That's not yeah. okay. I mean, just the stories I've heard alone of, like, fucking people who have gotten away from Scientology fucking blows my mind that that's a fucking thing today. Blows my did, goddamn mind. Did you guys hear about the one um, that kind of got blown up recently that was MLM slash sex cult and they were brand the women were branding themselves yep. with his initials? Yeah, yeah, that was like a lady from yeah. City was in there. Yes. A person I know legitimately got like tried to get recruited into that a couple years really? ago and was like, "This is weird." And then when the whole thing blew up and she saw it in the news, she contacted her friend that tried to get her into it and was like, "Is this the thing you're a part of?" And the friend was like, "Yes, but I was never in the sex cult part." And she's like, "Oh, okay. So did you brand yourself?" And she was like. I was gonna, and, like, it, like, and she was really upset because she felt very judged on the fact that, like, she was, and that was part of, like, later, th the, when it blew, because I think it blew up just a few months ago, like, later it's this year. It's very recent. It's very yeah, recent. Later this year was when she was going to be part of that ceremony. Like, she left her home and moved to Vancouver to be part of the inner circle of this no particular group. Oh shit. Wow. And I mean, it blew up, and she There was a time for it to do it. Fuck. To be 
branded and like all that jazz and i was like that's probably great because being branded with some dude's initials is not okay no not at all yeah i only knew that blew up because of what jojo was just talking about the chick from tv that it also got charged with a lot of the recruiting and shit yeah. like i saw all this news about her and i was like what the fuck is going on with her and i was like why does she look so familiar and I watch a show Kelsey would never fucking watch in a thousand fucking years because it would be considered dumb humor. But this show you called Wilfred, fucking amazing. I love Wilfred. I don't know if you know what it is, but it's fucking sure. Elijah Wood's next masterpiece after, you know, fucking Lord of the Rings <laughs> ended and he had nothing else to fucking do with his time. So, you know, it's always funny because I put like Elijah Wood and fucking Daniel Radcliffe in like the same tree all the time. Like I see those like it's like you had your one big thing and then you really have it done. Like what what does Daniel Radcliffe have after Harry Potter? Fucking Jack He's Knife Man. He's actually done a whole bunch. Yeah, but what was big? Jack Knife Man? Well, no. So the one where he played a fucking is, dead corpse the entire fucking time? The entire fucking movie? Specifically is he chose that kind of? He's like, I've got all the money anyone could ever want. I'm just going to do <clears> whatever <throat> thing someone seems cool but michael Sarah do. does now too uh, this does like I, italian movies i hate God, it because i, I love michael joke. and Sarah, dude oh. and i love Sarah the great. joke about michael Sarah that like he wasn't supposed to be an actor he was delivering coffee and somebody mistook him for an actor and he ended up in a movie and he just couldn't like he didn't know how to get out of it and he just rolled with it and now he's a famous actor and i'm like that's yep like that's it's a joke obviously it's not his origin story right. by any means but it feels like it just feels true you think of michael Sarah and his incredible awkwardness and you're like yes i could see this happening to this man the sad part is like i can't see him in anything outside of like those fucking cliche 90s type movies that are always played like in the 70s type era juno super bad fucking uh scott pilgrim versus the world like that's where he thrives yeah there you go that's where he fucking thrives right yeah oh, for and it's sure. like you can't see him as like a serious actor outside of that so maybe that's why he's doing italian flicks i don't oh, fucking okay. know I mean, he's a great 20 young 20s person he's not a great 40 year old no. hypothetically probably he's only 30 so, oh, i love God, him we're gonna see somebody put him in that role at some point oh yeah for sure well, maybe. I don't know. Apparently, there's a lot of people that will not work with him because he's a fucking asshole. Like, he's, like, really? legit a fucking... Look up Michael Sarah yelling on set. There are just fucking montages of him just berating people. He was in that movie, um, whatchamacallit, he got recasted by fucking Seth Rogen. Uh, or, no, got to be recasted as, or for Seth Rogen, what, re, what was the, the fucking next guy to play him. Um, the one where he's supposed to, like, I, I can't fucking talk right now. The one where he fucking knocks the chick up. I think the movie's just called Knocked Up, where it was, like, supposed to be, like, a one-time fling. And she was, like, you know, going with somebody a little bit low standard than her. Da-da-da-da-da. And she yes. ends up getting knocked up. Yeah. And it's Seth Rogen. Yeah, Michael Cera was originally playing that role. And the director fired him because he was such a fucking dick. Like, I kid you not, when you get done with the podcast, look this shit up. It's crazy. He berates people. It's fucking nuts. The dude's like a fucking Jeez. asshole. It oh, wait, sucks. People, people on this it. Michael Sarah video are saying this was him making fun of that time Christian Bales freaked out on a set and is maybe a stage. Look team. at the actress's face next to him. The chick in that oh, movie. So the, is, her fucking face is so awkward because she is just like another what is happening here one. is it's he yelling at her nuts. is he yelling no he's at yelling like at the director God. he's yelling at the director he's like obviously you don't know how to fucking direct he's like you keep saying yes you keep no, saying you know, no this is saying also this. these are all jokes this was on you funny sure? or die this is literally yeah. from funny yeah i i don't know about that though like i mean they might be fun, funny or die, but i don't think that's the original guys way after knocked up He's in uh, this is the you know remember this is the end the movie about the world ending and all the celebrities yeah. are gathered or whatever he's in that sort of playing the role of. But well, he's Michael only in there for like a couple asshole. seconds though, right? Also, yeah, uh, he's in. Uh, well, I'm yeah. talking about directors don't want to deal with him. I'm not talking about actors. There's a lot of directors. Uh, no, but I'm saying I think all him. the things you're seeing stage comedy bits. Maybe I mean it. Fucking it. I just don't see her being in it though. That's the problem. Well, no, like, it's okay, literally it's, the chick from the movie. For, yeah, it's something they filmed for, like, uh, you know, like a DVD or something. Maybe. It's Catherine Heigl know. also acting. It fucking, it, she looks so just awkward and out of place. And she because she's like an she actress. Was very and I guess. Fuck. 
Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I'll have to fucking do more research on it myself, I guess. But yeah, it was just, it was, there was a lot of it. And I was just like, man, dude, is he really like a fucking dick? Yeah, like the first result is a website saying <laughs> Michael Hissera has a history of fake public meltdowns for fun and free advertising. Mm. Yeah, it's just a joke. All of it. Maybe. But yeah, so, but yeah, I can't, I just can't, I can't see him outside of anything other than that. And it's just, it's oh, he's just got wheel crazy to me. Totally. Yeah. yeah. For sure, for sure. Which the movies he was in, I fucking loved. Like fucking Scott yeah. Pilgrim, Juno, and fuck, definitely. Superbad's probably one of my fucking favorite movies of all time. It's like right underneath Clerks. I fucking love that movie. It's so fuck. Jonah Hill is, man. The only God movie- damn it, I love Jonah Hill so much. The only movie oh I ever watched on a PSP. So. Did you? I have a real attachment to it. Yeah. My guy, yes, dude. I watched Superbad <laughs> so much. I was taking a bus back and forth from Texas to Alabama as a kid because, like, my family lived in Texas, but all my friends are in Alabama. So I wanted to be in yeah. Alabama as much as possible. It was rough, dude, as, like, a kid because I wasn't in fucking school. So I'm fucking going back and forth, like, all the damn time. I can't tell you how many buses I took back and forth between Texas and Alabama for years. Years, dude. And it would be, like, three months here, three months there, three months here type situation all the time. And I was young. I kid you not. I fucking got to the point where I bought a PSP and I bought that fucking movie, man, oh, really? <laughs> to watch on those bus rides, dude. I would do nothing but watch Superbad the entire way there. Eight hours, dude. I would just repeat that shit. Eight hours. Oh, my God. That movie was amazing. I my PSP, but I still did watch it on my PSP. Oh. That's how I watched I, it. I didn't have anything. I thought the PSP was very underutilized the only thing in my opinion that came out that was even worth it for the psp was crisis core other than that i didn't give a shit that's the only game i actually played on my psp to completion was crisis core other than that i didn't give a fuck about the psp so that thing became an entertainment I mean, it's, not, it's not the best thing i ever played you know yeah. had some good other ports of like rpgs that i played you know persona yeah. 3 yeah. On a different note, anytime I think to myself, why is Chris like this? I'm going to answer with that time he ate an ungodly amount of horrific food that I my brain keeps actively blocking out the details of because I am Oh, so the horrified. sloppy joes? Yeah. God, what was it? Like 15 sloppy joes and oh, whoa. No. What the hell was it 30? Like Yeah, it was 36. <laughs> Jesus Christ almighty. Yeah, so it's 36 sloppy joes in eight hours ad nauseum which um, by the way is why which, you are the way you are which by the way and she will comment to back this up recently i was telling this exact same story to my girlfriend's parents and they did not believe me and i called my mom and she said the number not me i said do you remember the night i got drunk and i ate a shit ton of sloppy joes she's like yeah 36 of them yeah <laughs> she said the number yeah, I fucking ate my ass off that night. It was nuts. It was the only time in my life, besides when we would go to CC's Pizza. Like, we go to CC's Pizza, I knew we were going like a day in advance. I wouldn't eat all that day. That way, whenever I got there, I would just dominate in the pizza eating challenge. Just fucking dominate because it's pizza buffet. And yeah, we would always do the thing where it's like you couldn't eat your crust, which is funny because we did that so much as kids that like I just don't like crust. So like whenever I eat pizza now, I physically just won't eat crust. I just don't. All because when I was a kid, I was so used to not eating crust because that was how you kept track of how many slices you had for the contest. So we called it our boneyard. Everybody had a boneyard, and you would just throw your crust in there. And, yeah, now as an adult, I literally just don't eat crust. I just, you know, everybody would be like, why aren't you eating your crust? I'm just like, yeah. Also, who the hell has ever asked you that? Nobody eats the crust. Mul- like, multiple people. I, I, I eat it. crust. It's a part of the food. It's um, the food. Sorry. Full I've sorry. had people, I mean, to be fair, like, I'm, 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 I'm a very clean person i've had literally friends be like oh, i'll finish that for you then like literally it's like you're not gonna eat your crust yeah sure you can have it fuck it i, I, I so, don't do that yeah sure. <laughs> i don't either i don't either i, like, I, like I just wanted to preface it by saying at one point to me i find it fucking disgusting because i would yeah. never do that like there's very few friends that like if they have like a drink i'll take a sip of and it won't bother me but like eating someone else's food, like I mean, if like my buddy, for instance, Joey is somebody, like I would one hundred percent, I'd be okay with doing it. But like if he had a burger, he's like, oh, bro, you gotta try this burger. Best believe I'm biting the other end of that motherfucker. And if he wants to cut it off, that's fine. I'm not yeah. putting my fucking mouth directly where Joey's mouth just was. It's not happening. Sorry, bro, if you're listening. But <clears throat> anyways, but yeah, so I I know people that will do that. I'm just like, mm, you know, it no, bothers some of our no. friends because. 
Scott and I are married. Scott and I have been married for years. And if I give him a piece of my food, like he'll bite from like exact same, like he'll bite from the other end of the burger. He will not touch where my mouth just was. And if he has a drink of a drink that I'm like, hey, you should really try this. He'll try it. He'll have the other side. And we have friends that are like, you guys are married. Why are you like this? And I'm like, he can be like freaked out by germs, even in relation to me. I am not disgusting to him. He would never bite it if somebody else had eaten it. He'll take a bite of my food. He won't touch anyone else's. But yeah. it bothers him. Like, that's your wife. Just eat, bite where she bit. And it's like, nah, he doesn't have to. Like, it's right. okay. I'm not offended. He's, it's not like he's like, no, she's made of trash. I will eat from the other <laughs> end of the burger. If he says that, he's going to get slapped. <laughs> like, it he doesn't bother me. me in that moment. Yeah, it doesn't bother me, but it it, it 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 doesn't bother me that that's how he does it. But it wouldn't bother mm-hmm. me to like, yeah. After my significant other, it's like fucking. I mean, come on, like, yeah, it doesn't bother me. Like, I, I I don't judge him at all. Like, fucking, there's plenty of times I'm sure my girlfriend's handed me something just without even thought process. I've taken a bite out of the other end and then they gave it back. But at the same time, if I bit off the same spot, it wouldn't fucking bother me. It's like, you know, yeah, end of the day, fucking who cares? Now. That being said, I did know a couple, and this is fucking disgusting, that shared a fucking toothbrush. Fuck nope. no. I don't nope. care how long you've been nope. married. Nope. I don't care how long you've known the person. That's fucking gross. Nope. Don't do that shit. I've had stories where they're like, oh, well, you know, like fucking one time I forgot. No, no. You use your fucking finger. Fucking yep. go down to the store, buy another fucking toothbrush, anything. Do not. No. That shit is fucking gross. No. No, I, no, I forgot nope. my toothbrush no. recently when visiting friends, and I used a Q-tip with stuff on the other. There's no there freaking way nope. I am using a toothbrush. Fucking I do nasty. know someone came to my house. I have an entire flat of Costco like toothbrushes. They forgot it at my house, and I went, "Here you go. This person's a dentist." <laughs> and I went, here you go. I have a bunch of them. And he walked into the back room. And the, the, t- to be fair, the package wasn't opened. And so he walked into the back room, came back out and was like, nah, I'll just use my wife's. And I'm like, are you kidding? I have I have a flat of them. And I th- the reason I say, to be fair, it wasn't opened is because some people are like, oh, I won't make you open something for me. But like, toothbrush? Make me open the damn flat for you. Like, I'm more than happy to. Nope. Used his wife's. And I'm like, you're a dentist. You knew better. Yeah. No. I was Mm-mm. upset. They're not a finite resource. Like buy another toothbrush, you psychopath. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Exactly that. Not the, the one-off. The one-off situation with this dentist guy in your house. Whatever. I don't. I don't support it. But fine. But like, in in a long-term situation, just own two of a thing. Ugh. They're not like expensive, Ugh. really. No. Ugh. Never. Gross. God. And can Gross. you imagine if that was if that was like a relationship threshold like you're in love with this person they're in love with you you're talking about a future together and then it's like hey to me married people share a toothbrush like that would be one of those boundaries I would put down and be like no this is not my future you can't use my toothbrush I'm not using yours we need to put a boundary here and if you can't respect that like I don't know how to operate in a relationship with you so I'll say this on on dead funny because I don't think I've ever said it before. I know I've said it on stream multiple times, so I don't I don't care. But either way, one thing like there there's 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 tons of stories out there, right, about fucking men, the shit they get into whenever their their significant others not home, right? Stuff that they're like, oh fuck yes, I can fucking do this. You know, everybody obviously goes straight to like fucking porn and everything else. Me, mine, using the bathroom with the door open. I don't know why. I don't know why that gives me freedom. But fucking A, I love it. I don't know why. Just to be able to walk in and not close the door behind me, I had no idea why. No clue. It doesn't make sense to me, but fucking A, whenever she's gone, I'm just like, hell yeah, I ain't got to close the door. I don't know why. I don't know why. I, 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 I guess I'm harmless. I'm a bit, yeah. I'm a big guy of not liking like doors closed because like I like to know my surroundings, and I maybe it's because like that's a very vulnerable spot to be in. Like if somebody broke in, having every chance to hear that break in, maybe that's why I feel that way. Like because I'm a big person, like, I do not like any of like I won't close my bedroom door at night. No, I want to know at any point somebody's breaking into my house. Like I fucking know about it. Like and you have, have this, any you have chance backwards. to stop it. It's a vulnerable position to be in. So lock the door so no one can get no. to you there. No, no. no. I was in my apartment no. for days alone 
and was still just fully locking the door when I was in nope. the bathroom because someone breaks in, I want another level of defense. The shower, I agree with out. you. The shower, I agree with you because there's so much noise and stuff going on, you're not going to hear it anyway. So that one, yeah, I close it, lock the door for sure. But whenever I'm using the restroom, nah, dude. Nah, dude. I'll be ready. Fuck it. There's a plunger. I'll be all right. I'll be all right. I'll figure something out. I'll figure something out. You're going to fling your poop at him. Let's be real. We there all we know go. how this Boom. goes. We have yeah. watched dead funny content before. Yes. If you don't know why I'm saying this, start with our podcasts. Get back here. Yeah. You'll yeah. figure it out. For sure. But yeah. So I don't know why that's a fucking thing for me, but fucking A. I, I, don't, I don't get it. But my, my point in me telling this was like I was telling this story not that long ago, I want to say this was like two weeks ago on a stream, and so many people were amazed that like I don't just do this when she's home. I'm like, that's fucking gross. They're all like, yeah, but you've been together, like you got a kid together. Doesn't matter. Literally, do- like I'm willing to do the whole because we have one bathroom thing. Like if she needs to like number one or I need to number one and the person's in the shower and the shower curtain is completely closed. Sure. I'm okay with letting that go. But anything other than fuck. No, absolutely not. I had a dude that was like, yeah, my wife will be taking a shower and I'll just go in and take a shit. You know what? No, that's disgusting. Absolutely gross. Absolutely gross. And also I to point out, I, she's not mobile yet, but I have a young daughter in the house as well, which is another reason I would never have the door just fucking open while I'm fucking doing my fucking business. Cause when she is mobile, fucking there you go. So I was just like, no, like n- why, why is that a thing? Like, I can't believe that like people are like, yeah, like sooner or later, you know, the, the romance and stuff is gone and then you just don't care. And I'm like, that's giving no. up. That's the end of the road. That's give. You, you're on yes. divorce's door at that point. You just don't give a <laughs> shit. You're looking for a reason to fucking break up. You're like, you know what? I hate being with her. Or I hate being with him. He's taking a shower. Fucking, I got a nice shit. shit brewing. Bam! Like that, you're divorce's no. door right there. I was like, no. you gotta be fucking shitting me. Absolutely not. Absolutely nope. not. Like if it nope. can be avoided, absolutely. 100%. Like if we had two bathrooms, like I said, the, the thing that I would let go... I wouldn't even fuck. It wouldn't even be a thing. I but not. I'll run all the way downstairs to go use the restroom, even if I got to pee, just to be a completely as far away from that as possible. But yep. yeah, I can't believe my it. my house. I am very blessed, and I realize that we have four bathrooms. We have two people that oh, live God in this damn. house. We have four fucking bathrooms, and if I don't even I remember that when I was there, I knew you had two at least. Four. Fuck. We have four bathrooms. <laughs> And there are two on the top floor, and Scott has one, and I have the other. Like, we we don't share bathrooms, which freaks out my in-laws. They're just like, aren't you worried that's going to lead to, like, a problem between you two? And I'm like, no, no, oh. I have my space. He has his space. We don't have to share this space. Like, yeah. when I'm getting ready in the morning, I don't need to be worried that he needs to barge in and use the restroom. Like, it's fine. And if we have guests or something like that. I'm not pooping in any of the, I'm not pooping in his, I'm not pooping in mine, which the guests use, and I'm not pooping in the main one, which the guests use. Like, there's one downstairs nobody use, but uses. I'll go all the way down there, because then I'm not bothering anybody, because nobody right. else knows it's there except for Scott. He does the exact same thing. Like, nah, there, uh-uh, no. Nope. Hard pass on the whole, let's just yeah. poop in front of each other thing. Like, no. no. Yeah, it's just never gonna happen. Fundamentally, poop is gross. It's not like an, a fun thing for anyone yeah. to be involved with. Like, it's not. There's no level of intimacy there where it's like, yeah, yeah. this is cool. It's just off-putting. Well, the part where the conversation Always. got really dumb was they go, "Well, you're telling me right now, like, if if you were dating a chick and she was throwing up, you wouldn't go in there and help her out." I was like, "That's a completely different scenario." That's, That's a not totally like, different not even, conversation. Yeah, it's not even in the same fucking boat. I was like, "What?" I was like, "There's there's one that's like, I mean, even if you were to go as far as to say she has like just fucking crazy diarrhea, I might like knock on the door and be like, "Hey, is there anything I can like go get you? Like, do you need like some Pepto or something like that?" I'm still not going in there. Like, it's not happening. Like, the the best case scenario I could see is me doing the whole, like, cracking the door open and throwing a fucking roll of toilet paper in there. Like, that's as far as that would ever go. But I store my toilet paper in the fucking bathroom because that's where it needs to fucking be. So, it's like, I, I just, I don't, no. Just, no. I just, I don't understand why that is just such a, a and, and 
No, the only that's... reason I bring this up is because you would be amazed at the amount of people who thought that was normal. The amount no, I of think people it I was is talking normal. to. That's I just crazy. think, like, I, I don't think it's abnormal, but I it don't think be. it is the standard. Does that make sense? Like, I feel like there's all couples kind of work this out their own way. And I'm part of a couple that says, yeah, we don't do that. Now, I know I did see a movie at one point where, like, somebody was, they were on they, a trip in a third world country and their bus got blown up and one of them was severely injured. And the other oh, one, yeah. like, like, they they had to... They had to use the restroom and there wasn't, like, there literally wasn't one. There was just a bedpan and, like, the woman was too injured to, like, get herself over a bedpan. So her husband had to, like, help her, like, undress enough. But to we're talking, like, like extreme on. scenarios. Yeah. yeah, like, that's extreme if, of the extreme. If that's the need, like, of course I'm going to do that for my husband. But... In a house with four bathrooms, I'm not letting him poop around me or me poop around him unnecessarily. Like, there is no need, so why would we do that? Like, I no, no, nope, no, hard pass. I do yeah. ever so gently have to, I, I gotta tell this story, and I will straight up say, this is not Scott's fault, and he is not to blame. It was just a horrifically unfortunate timing. So once upon a time, I put on, this was years and years ago in Scott's defense, I put on sexy negligee because I was trying to attract my husband and allure him. And I chose the wrong moment because he's in the bathroom brushing his teeth. Well, he mm. thinks he's, you know, more or less alone and I'm not going to walk up. The door is open. And so he's brushing his teeth. He lets a mean one fart, totally <laughs> silent. I'm unaware. I walk up in this sexy negligee trying to, like, allure my husband and just get a hit with this horrific smell. And from oh. whatever perspective... I showed up in sex the negligee and my husband farted at me to ruin the mood and then I was pissed and offended and it's really hard to be both offended and in a sexy negligee because oh, your body is saying fuck. come here and your face is saying I hate everything right now and that's oh, just that's a confusing message for anyone hilarious. so my poor spouse was like no come back I didn't fart at you and I'm like you farted at me and then I just like <laughs> left it was a defense mechanism. That's all I'm not saying! Babe, it was a defense mechanism. I'm sorry. <laughs> I heard footsteps behind me and it just, you know, fucking came out. Fucking defense yeah. mode. Boom. Done. Yeah, Get away. I was convinced for a very long time that he intentionally farted at me to make me go away. And he's like, no, I it did not. doesn't sound like his whole vibe. I, it's <laughs> not know. his vibe at all. My husband is a wonderful, generous human being. And if he didn't, well, if I'm coming at him in a sexy negligee and he's not interested, he's going to say, I'm not interested. He's not going to fart at me to try to discourage my wily ways. Right. Maybe he farted because you were doing... <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be fair, yeah, I don't know who you're trying to track to that. But... Clear, my 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 come hither is not this. Okay, that is, uh, is that seems, uh, not how I come hither. Because there's no way you pulled that trick out anywhere before the marriage on Scott and that worked. There's physically no, no fucking way that. No, happened. no possible way. I have never in my life been like this will attract the men. Yeah. No. Okay, say, you keep me. Me. me <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like you've got it down pretty fucking yeah. well. Like it does not like, look like it. Instinct. It definitely looks like it's been rehearsed multiple fucking times. Yeah. Like it's it's been played out for sure. I have told this story many times over the years. Okay. This is not okay. how I attract men. Yeah, you've scheduled choreography for it already. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I must say, I dated a lot of women. I'm pretty much down for a lot of situations. That is not one of them. That is a hundred percent. I would have looked at you and be like. Nah, no, no, <laughs> I'm, I can't I even sleep no under around. The same scenario. Yeah, I can't even sleep around you. I'm worried I'm gonna get oh fucking murdered or fucking wake up and my goddamn kidney's gonna be gone. <laughs> like, That's yeah. the creepiest. I would never try to actually allure someone that way. That's horrifying. Jesus. Oh my god. Oh well. As we're getting to the end of this year, <laughs> we're, so we're not. We're not. We're not. I'm bringing it back to the entire first story that we brought up because I had a specific reason I was wanting to talk about it. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Hard transition to the front of the podcast, by the way. So Pennywise coming to Dead by Daylight, right? <laughs> <laughs> we, as a group, were talking in chat and we were, it was Facebook Messenger, and we were talking about, because that's where we do our drop by daylight, whatever, and get ready for it. 
and we were talking about what would be Pennywise's Mori. And for those of you who don't know, Mori in the game allows you that once you've hooked somebody twice, you get to execute them after that versus letting the entity come down and claim them. You get to actually execute them. Some characters have one Mori. Some characters have two. It's like a light one and a heavy one type deal. Uh, Pyramid Head, perfect example. His light one is like they he knocks them down on the ground. They go to crawl away. He just takes that big sword, one over, you know, fucking full fucking moon circle and cleans them right in fucking two, which is great. Love it. His big boy Mori is whenever he fucking raises like this bob wire and construction fucking steel out of the ground and it wraps them up in like this fucking like cocoon type thing and their heads poking out and their feet are poking out and there's like a mid spot and he just takes the sword and shoves it straight in the mid spot and then fucking slices clean through. Fucking amazing. Scream, by the way, who's my new favorite killer at the moment. Well, I, I should say new favorite. I still like Pyramid Head more, but I play Scream a lot more than I do Pyramid Head at this point because he's just so fun. He's so fun to play. He's so quick and everybody hates him and the people i play with it's very easy to scare them most of them like canter for instance and i know he's gonna watch this podcast he's gonna get mad about me talking about this but <laughs> if you've ever wondered if it's worth tuning into one of our drunk by daylights let me tell you something at 10 30 central time that's when canter gets on if by all means get on just to hear canter's reaction this man does not like scary shit at all so for him to come and play this game took a lot of guts and i give him that but when he gets caught and he's in the middle of doing like a fucking generator or something the screams that come out of this grown adult man is fucking amazing it's absolutely amazing and i love it and to play someone like scream where i can go into stealth mode and crouch so he can't see me and i don't have a terror radius and out of nowhere he goes from working on a generator to being picked up and thrown over my shoulder in seconds it's the best thing in the world him and my mom like i did it to my mom one time and she almost had a heart attack in the middle of the game like it scared the fucking piss out of her like she literally screamed so loud and then was quiet for like a solid five minutes like she literally was like i almost had a heart attack it's great it's fantastic so but screams more yeah i love because he like hits them down and then he gets on top of them and they're like laying like face down and he fucking pulls the knife out and he stabs them in the back like three times and then stabs them in the side a couple times then he grabs their head picks it up slits their throat and then puts the knife away pulls out a camera gets his face next to theirs takes a selfie and then fucking throws their head down and then fucking puts his camera up and then gets up and walks away i love it it's so great and i didn't know that was maury so the first time i did it <laughs> it was on canter <laughs> And he's like, well, this is just obsessive. And I was like, don't worry, dude. I'm taking this to post it on Facebook. <laughs> God. Oh, it was so fucking funny. Uh, but anyway, so we were talking about Maury's. And right now the most brutal one is the hag. And she's like this skeleton swamp creature. <clears throat> and what did she's like feral as fuck. And so what she does is, is like she, you fall down trying to run from her. And then, like, you turn around, and she, like, fucking leaps onto you, starts biting at your neck, ripping your fucking neck and stuff out. And then she, like, takes her hand and goes from, like, the bottom and just rips straight up your fucking stomach, pulling, like, all your fucking insides and shit out, and then just starts fucking eating them. Like, she's, like, the most brutal. She's, like, number one. I want Pennywise to top that. I want Pennywise to top that. So Why? I want to put this out here just in case these become his mores recorded evidence right here right now his first mori has to do with his famous saying they all float or it's time to float either one of those they all float down here or it's time to float and that's what he always says and there's a reason why for those of you who don't know pennywise i'll get into that but he's always seen with a red balloon <clears throat> so i want to see like him standing there and he's got the red balloon like block in his face and like i want the vision to go like from the survivor and then all of a sudden the balloon pops and then they're like in the air and he's like holding them by the neck up in the air and then says it's time to float and then his whole mouth or his whole face just rips open like it does in the movie and then the lights come out and that's what fucking like basically like takes their soul out and their body just fucking floats off into whatever that's his easy one his big boy one i thought a lot about this one right <laughs> so the most famous scene from it is the very beginning of the movie. His very first victim, the little boy, Georgie. Very sad situation. He loses his little 
paper sailboat that he made to go down the fucking roads in the into the sewage drain, and that's where he sees Pennywise for the first time. So his famous line from that is take it when he's talking about the boat. He's like, Oh, don't forget your boat, Georgie. Take it, take it, take it. Like he does that. And it's really creepy. So what I want him to do is as the survivors are running, I want him to like hit them and knock them down and then like them drop their item. And then he'll be like, oh, I'm sorry. And they pick it up and be like, take it, take it. And then as they go to do it, he does the whole grab in their arm and biting it off like he did Georgie. And then there's another scene in the movie where there's this kid that falls down and he breaks his arm. <clears throat> and then Pennywise is like all stuffed up, like his body is completely turned like 360, his Bottom torso is turned 360, and he's like kind of scrunched up like this, and he's hiding inside of a refrigerator. And he comes out of the refrigerator like that at this little kid. And he's like, literally starts walking towards him, and he's like, time to float. And then he starts like walking towards him, and the kid's like fucking screaming and crying and backing up. He's got a broken arm, and so he can't do nothing. So the kid starts crying, and it grabs his hand, Pennywise, and he starts like slapping himself in the face. He's just like, oh, ho, 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 like mocking him. Like, oh, ho crying and stuff so i want him to grab the arm that he just bit off of the survivor and do that but oh, like making fun of him and just fucking devour him right there on spot done yeah i'm pretty excited about it so you heard it here first folks that would be fantastic okay what, what if they do one where it, it looks like the character is going to get away there's a cut scene right and he's trying to do something and then it looks like the guy's going to run away and then it does a cut it says 27 years later then he's back. Then he murders the guy. That's, that's, that would be lame. Two now. That would be lame as fuck. I they, would they be age so your character mad. 27 years. They, they make so old person bad. models for everybody. I wouldn't care about that at all. Like, no. Nah. No. No. Unless they did the I'm famous from the first that. movie. From the first movie, when they first come back as adults, Georgie goes to see, or not Georgie, fucking Billy goes to see Georgie's grave. And while he's there, he looks up to the side. This is Tim Curry. He looks up to the side and he sees uh, tombstones with fucking uh, freshly buried plots. And then one that's like currently being digged up. And as he looks closer, he sees like all his friends' names on the tombstones that are coming to meet him in town. And the last one that's being dug is it has his name. And for those of you who don't watch it, Billy stutters as a kid. And that was like a big moment in the movie because like as a kid, he has this saying that he says all the time where it's like the man hits his fist against the post, uh, da, 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 da. It's like this whole thing that his dad taught him to kind of help him whenever he's stuttering to kind of like fit, fix his speech. And so in the new movie, it mocks him by saying that phrase. And the old one is whenever he comes back as an adult, he sees that and he's all like, how's it going? B -b 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 Billy boy. Like it was fucking amazing because he's been an adult and he hasn't stuttered for like 20 years. Like he's been stutter free. And then like the rest of the movie, he's just so fucking terrified that he's just stuttering like all the fucking time. And it was just, oh, Tim Curry was so fucking good at that role. God damn it. That dude terrified me as a child. Like, there's no yeah. ifs what's about it. That that shit terrified me. I was scared to fucking do anything because I thought this motherfucker was going to come out of anywhere and just fucking take me. Like, I was terrified of it. And now I fucking love him. My fucking favorite killer. Dude's a beast. But I like Bill Scarlet. This Scar is not my jam. I love this is it. not it's my great. jam. Right. So I'm hoping if we get Pennywise that that's his Mori because that would be so good like we've been talking about it like all day and that was the one I came up with I was like dude that would be so fucking good I was like because they have to do something with the float like that's that's the fucking iconic line but uh because the girlfriend that I'm with uh whenever we were in the office I had a little whenever it became Halloween I wanted her uh to go see uh it too with me and it wasn't out in theaters anymore but she just doesn't watch um scary movies whatsoever so i was like well we got to see it we got to see it and at this point we we're living together she's like no no no, i don't want to go see it i don't want to go see it i was like come on come on let's, let's watch it she's like i don't want to watch it i was like fine so i went out and i bought an it pop and i would hide it in places <laughs> you absolute dickhole in her cubicle i would do that so she would just find it random parts throughout the day she took it like a champ she took it like a champ but what was cool is that she actually made the fucking paper boat one time when I was in a meeting 
and she wrote like take it all over it like in different fonts and stuff like that and like exclamation marks and stuff and then had that sitting on my desk with him after she had found him one time i was like oh this is so fucking cool yeah she's a better human being than i am that's amazing (laughs) (laughs) oh man so yeah but yeah hopefully we get pennywise and that's all i'll ever do for the rest of the time on that game is just play killer and play pennywise because that's great i love playing survivor but that would be amazing that would be amazing but you know what Uh, (sighs) and this is the first time you're hearing about this they don't do a lot of crossovers with pennywise the only time he's really been anything else is in the recent space jam movie it's fucking terrible it's fucking terrible what I else is in the Space Jam movie? Told me to do it. She told me to say the thing <laughs> she we're told me earlier. To do it, guys. Following they tell their best stories when the camera is not on, and then I have to yell at them, and I'm like, "Tell it again!" And like, Chris is just like, "Meh, I already told you. This is sort of almost <laughs> a highlight. Nope, it's actually just going to phrase. It's going to reference the highlight I already told you. But nobody was saw that other than the people on the podcast, so nobody has a goddamn clue what he's talking about. I will yell at you until you all learn." <sighs> Goddamn mouth shut until we are on the podcast and then tell your amazing stories so the only people who hear them aren't just the three of us. All right, I'm calm. I'm chill. I'm See, a lot of people would be like, oh, wow. You don't get upset that she just takes that kind of tone? It's like, no, because she's trying to preserve our content, so I'm okay with I it. I am. I'm just terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I never think about it in the moment. It's just like, I don't think you guys understand. Like, I genuinely love what I do for Dead Funny. Like, genuinely love it. So, like, talking to you guys on the podcast is, like, a fucking highlight of my Tuesday. Like, I fucking love talking with you guys, sitting down just talking. So whenever you guys get in, I'm like, fuck yeah, conversation time, let's go. And then we just start talking while I'm setting shit up, and I completely just forget about it, so. Also, out of curiosity, who has an issue with the tone that I take with you? No. Okay. Me and you were too good of friends for that to actually be a thing. I I was going to say, that's how you talk to friends sometimes. Not all friends, obviously, but a bunch of friends, yeah. Has anybody ever actually cornered you and been like, "Um, the bitch was getting a little uppity? No, no. I'm just saying, if they just watched what you, how you just specifically did that, I was like, Jesus Christ. You're like, these motherfuckers. Chris tries to talk to me alone. He's just like, did you see what that... It, bitch, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> See how she was. Oh I man! Never, obviously, I would never. <laughs> <laughs> Throw okay, me under the bus. Sometimes I earn it. Okay. <laughs> sometimes I earn it. It's all right. Uh, like I said, it's to preserve our content. It doesn't bother me. I just wish I was better at noticing it in the moment, but I just get too excited, so I just boom, just go. So That's what I'm here I for. just forget sometimes that not everyone also saw the thing where the guys from the Clockwork Orange are in the Space Jam movie. I didn't even watch the That's movie. That's just so, so weird. That's a ridiculous thing. That makes no sense. Like they're only they're just in the background watching a basketball game, but it's just like AI versions of Malcolm McDowell and the other gang. I know almost nothing about Clockwork Orange on purpose, and yeah. I'm fairly certain those characters would not just chill out at a basketball game. I, I think they are sex criminals. They're definitely murderers, for sure. They're definitely murderers, and yeah. it's pretty well, brutal, it's not, if I remember correctly. That yeah, was not something like... But also, like, will an eight-year-old watching it be like, wow, I want to know more about those guys <laughs> in the crowd? Like, it's probably just for daddy. Like, ooh, yeah, I know that. Mm. I remember that movie. I heard the movie was. Terrible. I don't know. Not that like the first one was like a fucking work of art. By Excuse any fucking me. It was, and I will no. fight you forever. It was not. It was. It was. It was, it was, it, and this it, one was seems, it was okay as a child. It did not age. Yeah. Well. It's a terrible movie now. This one seems like an out. even more naked promotional tool than the last one. All right. Because they have these crowd part. shots of every Warner Brothers character yeah. ever. Yeah, and there's a Rick and Morty cameo. Oh, they have, they have spoken dialogue. And that is again a thing for adults, really, sensibly. Uh, yes, hopefully. Yeah, they, like it could be a thing for like teens. It's fine, but like not for like the nine year olds who should be go seeing some, some ass Space Jam movie. Jesus Christ. 
Uh, to me, it just seems like a lot of people do the whole, like, who's better, LeBron James or Michael Jordan, and this is just another, like, fucking nail in that coffin of, like, who's fucking did this fucking better, and it's like, who cares? I mean, and, yeah, in this case, Michael Jordan wins by a mile, I think. But it's like, who cares, dude? Who cares? Like, that wasn't the highlight of even his career, his, his fucking skills on the fucking court, who cares? So, oh well. Anyway, anyways, doesn't fucking matter. But we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here. If you guys enjoyed this content, make sure you like, subscribe. Also, turn on the notification. That way you get notified next time we upload another episode. It's in the comment section below. Let us know your thoughts and views on some of the stuff we talked about. Uh, we also have our Twitter and Twitch links down there as well. Uh, we have a lot of fun with that. Make sure you're always checking those out. Um, other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. We'll see you next time.